So what I was saying is that uh, when we introduced the cell division, we said that there are two types of cell division. Mitosis, which takes place in the somatic cells, and uh, we have already discussed that one. Then there is also, we mentioned to say that uh, there is also meiosis. So meiosis, this takes place in, uh, in reproductive uh, organs, so-called gonads. That's where meiosis takes place. So gonads, when it comes to males, it's the testis. The testis, then when it comes to females, we are talking of ovaries. That's where meiosis takes place. Then these are, pro are going to produce what we call now gametes. So they are going to produce gametes. So all the same, when we talk of males, then uh, these gametes are going to be sperms. Then uh, females, we are talking of uh, eggs. So now, this uh, type of cell division, we are just looking at how these uh, gametes are formed or are produced. And uh, I know that um, you have com come across or you have heard that uh, these gamete cells have got a haploid number of chromosomes. Whereas what we discussed in mitosis, we said that the, the cells which are produced in mitosis, they have got a diploid number of chromosomes. That is, they have got 2N. This is in meiosis. Then, uh, oh sorry, mitosis. Then here now we are saying that these gametes are going to have half the number of the total number of chromosomes that uh, uh, somatic cells have. So these, they have got haploid number of chromosomes, and this haploid number of chromosomes is denoted as a N, like that. So what it means here is that if we are saying that uh, the body cells have got uh, a pairs, pairs of chromosomes, which we call the diploid number, let's say this particular organism has got uh, 40 chromosomes. This is a, a body cell of a particular organism. Then if this is the diploid number of that particular organism, it's what we are denoting as a 2N. Then its gamete cells, it's going to have a haploid number of chromosomes. So the haploid number of chromosomes of 40, here it's going to be 20. This is what we are calling N. So this is what we mean by haploid number. Hap, ha, haploid coming from half, then this uh, diploid number die for two. So that's it. So that's where this uh, meiosis takes place in uh, reproducing organs, testes and ovaries, where they do produce now gametes. So this is where now we just want to, to see how these uh, gametes are produced. And one thing that you have to note is that uh, the type of cell that are going to be produced from meiosis, they are not identical to each other then also they are not identical to their parent or mother cell. Whereas when we discussed mitosis, we said the newly produced uh, cells, they are, they are identical and they are, got, uh, they are also identical to their uh, parent cell, which is the mother cell. So here we are going to start with um, 2N, but to we'll end up with N. And we are going to produce uh, 4 of the the daughter cells here are going to be produced for from a single cell, like that. Whereas in mitosis, we produced only two cells from the mother cell. So why am I relating meiosis and mitosis? There are some of those questions which do ask to say that uh, what are the similarities or differences between meiosis and uh, mitosis? So what I'm doing here is that uh, I'm trying to give out those differences uh, which exist between meiosis and uh, mitosis. That's why I'm mentioning mitosis as well as uh, meiosis. So be able to link these two. They are not the same, but uh, the process uh, is the same. And uh, some of the similarities are these what I'm mentioning here. So we are saying that this uh, meiosis takes place in uh, in the gamut uh, of sex producing cells. Then again, meiosis is also regarded as um, reduction cell division. Reduction cell division. The reason why, because there is a 
you are starting with a diploid, as I said, you end up with a hyploid. So you are reducing the number of chromosomes. So that's why meiosis is also regarded as a haploid number, uh, haploid cell division. So overall, having noted this, overall, there are this meiosis takes place in two stages. There is what we call meiosis one, as you can see here. My heading is a uh, say meiosis one. Then there is also what we call meiosis two. So what is the difference between uh, meiosis one and meiosis two? That is what we we want to understand by the end of uh, this class. Now it's like this. Uh, these we are calling gamete, uh, gametes or sexy cells, sperms and uh, eggs. They have got haploid number of chromosomes. So after fertilization, these now they combine. So fertilization, there is going to be fusion of uh, sperms, sperms plus uh, eggs. So we are saying these have got haploid number of chromosomes. So um, let's say normal human cell, we said it has got uh, 46 chromosomes. Meaning that eh, the sperm cells and the uh, eggs of uh, humans is uh, 23. So these sperms are the ones which are going to have 23 chromosomes, which we represent as N. Then an egg also has got uh, 23. Then these now when they fertilize, that's when now they are going to produce haploid num or diploid number of chromosomes, which is going to be 46. So the chromosomes which we have, 46 chromosomes that a human uh, cell has, the 20, 23 of those pairs come from the father, then 23 of those come from the mother. That's why we have 46, we have 46 chromosomes in the human, human cell. So that's how it comes about. And this is true in all other living organisms, be it beds, uh, uh, fish, and uh, everything. What only differs is maybe the total number of chromosomes that those species may have. But uh, gamete cells always have got a uh, uh, appropriate number of chromosomes. So now what happens in meiosis 1, <coughs> this cell is first... Uh, before the cell enters meiosis 1, it will first enter the interphase. We say the interphase is the preparatory phase. So in the interphase, the cell is going to grow here in, uh, in the G1. Then in the G2 here, sorry, before the G2, we have uh, S phase. In the S phase, there is still duplication of the chromosome and uh, DNA replication. Then G2, the cell continues to prepare for, for meiosis now. Then after this interface, that's when now the cell can enter the meiosis 1. So meiosis 1, just like uh, mitosis, is also further subdivided into 4. So because we are looking at meiosis 1, there are these phases. So the first phase is going to be prophase 1. Prophase 1 meaning that it is with reg regard to meiosis 1. Then the second phase is going to be Metaphase 1. Here everything is going to be 1, 1, 1. Then uh, after metaphase 1, we are going to have uh, anaphase 1. Then finally, we are going to have, uh, we are going to have uh, telophase 1 as well. Telophase 1. Then after this, still more cytokinesis will come in. The division of the cytoplasm, the division of the cytoplasm, then we can say me, uh, meiosis 1 has come to an end. Then when we'll be discussing meiosis 2, these will be the same phases, but now the name will just change. Here it will be meiosis 2 just like that. But meiosis 2 is very much similar to what we discussed yesterday. What happens in mitosis is the same as what happens in meiosis 2. Then again, I would want you to link the, the similarities and differences between meiosis 1 and uh, meiosis 2. 
so a lot of questions which they like asking in, in an exam, they come from meiosis 1 because it is in meiosis 1 where there are a lot of activities which do take place. So I want you to pay attention to those activities which we are going to discuss very soon. So the most complicated or the longest uh, phase when it comes to meiosis 1 is uh, the prophase 1. The rest are short. Then the shortest as, as usual it is still the metaphase. Then these may, may be may fall in between. Okay, so these are the phases which exist there. Then now we can uh, start looking at them one by one. So let's start with uh, prophase one. What happens in the uh, in the prophase one? Just as I've already mentioned, prophase one is the most complicated phase in uh, meiosis in meiosis one. So there are a lot of activities which are, do take place in here in uh, prophase one. So now think of, uh, look at this chromosome as uh, we used to look at it uh, when we are moving from interphase to enter the M phase. So the same is true. This uh, chromosome at this point is in a form of a chromatin. Is in a form of, uh, of a chromatin. Then there is going to be condensation through coiling so that uh, this chromatin or a chromosome can become thick and uh, and short. The same is what happens in, in this uh, prophase 1. Then, just apart from those, the, the nuclear membrane also has to disappear here, just like in, in uh, the prophase of uh, mitosis. But there is more to that now. So uh, the most interesting part now comes in here. Think of uh, fertilization taking place. So we have got these, these chromosomes. Let's have these two different cells. These are two different cells. So we have, um, let's have this as uh, an egg. Then this, uh, let this be a, sp a sperm. So, so that we see what will, will happen here. So what we have here, this egg has got 23 pairs of chromosomes. So I will only show uh, one of the chromosomes here in, the, in this egg. Then in this side, in the sperm also has got 23 chromosomes, but I will only show one. So now think of fertilization taking place. So what will happen here is that uh, this egg will fuse with the sperm during fertilization so that they can produce uh, a zygote. Now this zygote is going to have um, 23 chromosomes from the father and 23 chromosomes from the mother. That's why it's going to end up with 46 uh, chromosomes. But how does this come in now? What will happen now is that uh, this chromosome, uh, the sperm, is going to contribute those 23 chromosomes. So I'll represent this uh, white as the chromosome com coming from the father. So we're going to have that chromosome here. This now, what we are forming here is now a zygote. Then we are also going to have uh, another set of 23 chromosomes from the mother. So we are going to have uh, this. What we have formed here now, this is the diploid, diploid number of chromosomes, 2n, and this is a zygote. So we have moved it from there. Now, what I want you to pay an attention here is this. We have got these chromosomes which have come from the father. So these chromosomes which, which come from, from the father are the ones which we call paternal chromosomes. So these are paternal chromosomes. Then the chromosomes which come from the mother, we call them maternal chromosomes. So maternal and paternal chromosomes, after fertilization, they are going to fuse and uh, uh, to form a zygote. This zygote is going to have uh, one set of chromosomes from the mother, that is 23 chromosomes from the mother and 23 chromosomes from the father. So this yellow chromosome is representing 23 pairs from the 
from the mother and this white one is representing also 23 chromosome from the father so it's n and uh, n because both of them were haploid so these now are the ones when you add n and n are the ones which gives us that two as a uh, the diploid number of chromosome then now we start saying the normal human cell has got 46 chromosome this is how it comes about okay so this is what happens now it is from here from here that uh, this process one now will start uh, showing its activities so your attention now as i explain should be from from here the activity that will be explained will start from from there the interaction between the paternal and the maternal uh, chromosomes that uh, that is where you should uh, pay attention at okay so i'm not so sure um if it would be necessary for, for me to explain this this uh, prophase one of uh, meiosis is further subdivided into five just this prophase is further subdivided into five other stages but uh, it has been long enough they don't uh, your syllabus doesn't uh, teach those and uh, they don't ask questions so I don't know about this here. So that's why I was saying, uh, I don't know if it would be necessary for me to, to explain. But what I'll do is, I'll just mention. So let me do this before I, I explain what happened there. So what I'm saying is that this plot phase of meiosis 1 is further subdivided into 5. So what are these 5 stages of plot phase 1? So it's divided into what we call, the first one is leptotin. We have leptotin, then we have uh, zygotin, then we have uh, pactin, then we have uh, uh, diplotin. We have diplotin, then finally we have uh, diakinesis diagnosis so these are the five uh, further uh, sub stages of prophase one of uh, meiosis so what i'll be explaining what will i'll be explaining what will be happening to these uh, paternal and maternal chromosomes are the ones which will, co will make up these five stages of uh, prophase one so i'll tell you that in this case now i'm explaining this stage of uh, prophase one so the way we explain that there is condensation and coiling of uh, the chromosomes in uh, prophase 1, that takes place during the leptotin phase of uh, prophase 1. Condensation so that the, cl the chromatin can, became, can, can become thick and uh, short, that is uh, part of uh, the leptotin of this uh, prophase 1. Then in zygotin, that is what we will be explaining. That is what now I'll be explaining. So think of uh, this. We have moved on from a chromatin which has uh, just condenses and coils. So it has now it's now it, it's now visible. I explained last time that the when the cell is entering the mitosis or meiosis here, the chromosomes are invisible. So they only become visible when they when the chromosome condenses. When it coils, that's when it becomes visible. So in this case now, this chromosome has a coiled, so it's now visible. Then apart from that now, here we are just presenting the pair of this chromosome as two. But think of those 23 as a pairs from the mother and the father. So we have 23 chromosomes from the mother and 23 chromosomes from the father. That is what I want you to, to think of. We have 23 pairs of these chromosomes now. So what will happen now is that these chromosomes, the maternal and paternal chromosomes, will come close to each other to form a pair of a chromosome. The maternal and uh, paternal chromosomes will align close to each other gene for gene to form a pair of chromosomes. 
So what I'm saying here is that those 23 pairs of, uh, sorry, we have uh, these 23 chromosomes from the mother and the 23 chromosomes from the father. So each and every chromosome, a single chromosome from the, uh, the father here is going to form a pair with it a single another chromosome from the from the mother there so each and every chromosome they are going to form those pairs so how they will look like they will look like this so we're going to have with this chromosome as the, coming from the mother then from the father then we're also going to have uh, this chromosome coming coming th from from the mother so they will form this pair now this is what we mean when we say that eh, the chromosomes now, the maternal and paternal chromosome, they will come close to each other and align gene, gene to gene, close to each other, just like this. So meaning that now here we are going to have 23 pairs, because here now you can see that we, have, we are going to have a total of 46 chromosomes, since we have 23 of, uh, from the mother and 23 from the father, so we have 46 chromosomes. Then these 46 now are going to form each each and every chromosome is going to form a pair of a gene. So we are, we, we end up with it, only 23 pairs of chromosome. But from those 23 pairs of chromosome, we just here I'll be using a single pair of chromosome representing all of them. So whatever will be happening to this pair of chromosome is the same thing that will be happening to all other types of uh, other pairs remaining there. So now, this uh, process by which a, pa a maternal and paternal chromosome come to uh, close to each other to form a pair of a chromosome is what we call synapsis. So we have this, this one now. I can assure you that uh, this, uh, if you go through past papers, you are going to come across a question which you, I will ask you about this. So the synapsis takes place in a prophase one. Where exactly? So this synapsis now is what complies the zygotin phase of prophase one. So we are saying that synapsis, this is the process by which uh, a, a, a chromosome from the mother and or maternal and paternal chromosomes form a pair or align themselves gene to gene to form a pair of a chromosome. That is what we call synapsis. So there is a reason why this has to form. We are going to see that uh, why there is um, there's such. So synapsis only takes place, uh, yes? Yes, that's why when I was starting, I mentioned that uh, this cell, when uh, this cell is entering the meiosis one, it first has to pass through the interface. So why it has to pass through the interface is because there is a need for uh, duplication of the chromosomes. So that's where this, uh, these chromosomes duplicated in the interface, particularly in the S phase. Come again. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So what we are going to have is uh, after synapsis in that cell we are going to have 23 pairs. 23 pairs. These 23 pairs, earlier on, we started with 23 from here. These were 23 from the mother. Then we also had 20, 23 from the father. In total, that's where here we had 46. So now I say that I'm only using two. One from the mother representing 23 or those. Then one from the father also representing the 23. I can't be, I can't manage to draw all the 23 chromosomes. 
So then now think of these are 23 chromosomes from the mother. These are also 20, 23 from the father. That is just after fertilization takes place. Then now those 23 from the mother, each one of those is going to look for uh, its uh, corresponding chromosome from the mother of the opposite sex. That is going to be the chromosome from the mother. So each one of these is going to at least look for uh, a partner or the opposite sex. So these now are what we call, as they come together to form those uh, pairs, that is what we call synapses. So they will come close, we are going to have uh, 23 pairs which will look like this. So this formation, that's what uh, we call synapses. They will just align themselves close to each other, like this. I don't know if uh, we are all together there. Okay, so now we have got these uh, 23 um, pairs of these chromosomes. Proper thinking here should be at this point, we say that uh, sperms and eggs don't have uh, a pair of chromosomes. They only have uh, 23 each. They only have 23 each. But here, what we are looking at is uh, the moment after fertilization has taken place, we are going to have a uh, uh, pair of chromosomes. So at this point, we have uh, those 46 chromosomes. So it is these 46 which are going to reduce to 23 to 23 at the end. But before that happens, all of these processes have to take place. So that is it. We have passed synapses. So synapses, I said, is what complies the zygotin phase of prophase 1. Now what happens here is that uh, these uh, chromosomes which form a pair, they have got two corresponding genes. If they don't have uh, two chromosomes, don't have corresponding genes, that pair of chromosomes cannot form. So what we, are, we mean is this. If um, at this position or this gene from the mother, there is a, uh, or this chromosome from the mother, there is a, there's a gene which calls for eye color. Let's say it's denoted as a, uh, B. So this B now is going to be an area. Then at the same position on this uh, chromosome from the father, there should be same area. For if it's eye color, it has to be eye color, like that. So chromosomes which are, um, have got uh, similar or same genes, that's why, uh, what forms a, forms a pair. So that is the reason why each and every chromosome is going to find its corresponding pair of a chromosome because they have got similar genes. It doesn't matter if this one has got capital letter B and R, then the corresponding, the corresponding chromosome has got a small letter B. It doesn't matter. All what it means here is that these areas are coding for the same. Let's say if it's a, a skin color. This one is just um, recessive, this one is dominant, but all of them are coding for the same for the same trait, that is a skin color in this case. So that's what happens. So the reason why these chromosomes will have to come together, at one point there is going to be cross mashing. They will share, uh, exchange their, they will exchange uh, some of their portions. We shall see very soon. Now before we move on, there's this. When these chromosomes come together to form this pair, this one now becomes to be called, this pair comes to be called a tetrad. A tetrad, which is also known as, uh, it has got different names, tetrads, also known as a bivariant, also known as a tet tetravariant. Okay, 
So what is this, or what do we mean by this? Uh, tetrad has to deal with the four. Tetra four, four. So why four? The four comes in because of these uh, chromatides. So we, have, we are going to have four chromatides, two from this chromosome from the mother, and two uh, uh, chrom uh, chromatides from the father, uh, that uh, paternal chromosome. So these, we have two here, two chromatides, another two chromatides together, making up four. So that's why we call it as a, a tetrad. So a tetrad is uh, just a group of, uh, a pair of uh, chromosomes. Then when we say a bivariant, a bivariant now, bi has to deal with two. So when we say bivariant, it is with respect to number of chromosomes. So this, uh, despite it having uh, these sister chromatides, it's just a single chromosome. So in general here, we only have two chromosomes. Th these are just two chromosomes. So we say a bivariant, what we mean is just a pair of a chromosome. When we say tetravariant, it is with respect now to how many uh, chromatides are there. Same with the tetrad. Also tetrad is with respect to how many uh, chromatides are there. So that is it. Then again, a pair of chromosome is what we call a homologous. So homologous, those are two chromosomes. So a bivalent is just a pair of homologous chromosome, or tetravariant is just a pair of homologous chromosome which have got four uh, chromatides. So here we have two sister chromatides and uh, these other are not sister chromatides. So when this alignment forms, what is going to follow next is going to be exchanging of uh, portions. these chromosomes are going to change some of their portions and it is from here that the, the daughter cells which are going to be produced they are not going to be identical. Why? Because there is a sharing of portions. So what will happen is this. We moved from here so there is this formation of a homologous chromosome which we call a bivalent or tetravariant. This formed that is what we called synapsis. Then after synapsis takes place, then now there is going to be exchange of portions. So the only chromatides which will exchange their portions are these non-sister chromatides. So these two are non-sister chromatides. By now you know, when we say sister chromatide, they have to come from the same chromosome. So because these, uh, these two chromatides here are not coming from the same chromosome, that's why we call them the non-sister chromatides. So now it is these non-sister chromatides which are going to change their, exchange their portions. So they are going to cross mash. They are going to cross mash. The, what we see here is that uh, why I've even changed the colors here. I'm representing one here as uh, from the mother. The other one, the other chromosome is representing the set from the father. So in short here, the genes from the mother and the genes from the, uh, the father are the ones which are going to exchange. We represent this chromosome at this point like this, just for the sake of understanding. But in general, these chromosomes, they are on top of each other. This one was supposed to be seen on top of this other chromosome, but we can't show it from here. But in general, that is what happens. Now, when these chromosomes come together, they form a complex which is known as <laughs> synaptonemo complex. This synaptonemo complex is formed when one uh, when these chromosomes align themse uh, themselves on each other. That complex now becomes to be called synaptonemo complex. As I said, this chromosome is on top of this other chromosome. Then these synaptonemo, these are proteins which hold those genes together. Then the complex 
since there are two which have joined to form one thing, that's why we call it as a, a complex. So synatonemo complex like that. Then now there is going to be exchange of their portions. So the genes are going to, to shuffle. Genes from the mother and the father are going to shuffle. Like this, as we can see now. Like that, there is a cross match there. So this point here, where this cross match takes place, we call that one as a, a chiasma. Chiasma uh, plural then or chiasmata singular. So we only show uh, one crossing point between the homologous chromosome, but in real life, these chromosomes cross match at different points. It may be even there, uh, even at that point, at different points, but we for the sake of understanding, because what takes place at those different points are the same, we only show one uh, such point. So we have that point so-called the, the chiasma. That is the point at which these two uh, these homologous chromosomes exchange their portions. Now, this process of exchanging portions of um, genes is what we call the closing over. So, crossing over. This is just the process by which the homologous chromosomes exchange their portions. Then the point at which they exchange their portions, that is what we call the chiasma or the chiasmata. We are moving here, guys. These are very important uh, points to understand. Now, after this, After this crossing over takes place, these uh, chromosomes will still be attached at the chiasma. They will not just uh, detach from each other. No, they will still remain attached at the chiasma. So this guy, the crossing over here, this now, excuse me, the crossing over is what now complies this uh, third stage of uh, prophase one. The pactin. This is it is in pactin of prophase one, where crossing over takes place. So there is. Uh, why do is there a need for these uh, chromosomes from the mother and the father to cross match? The reason why he uh, there is this is because of uh, to bring about variation. I can tell you from here that uh, if you look at your your siblings. All of you, you have got the same mother. You are coming from the same mother and the same father. But you are not completely the same. You are not uh, identical. So the reason why you, you are not the same, you don't look the, uh, exactly the same, it's because of uh, the close matching which took place during prophase one of uh, meiosis. If there is no close matching in uh, meiosis, all of the... The, each and every family, the people would have been looking the same because there was going to be no change. But because there is this close matching, you find that despite uh, both of you coming from the same parents, you are not identical. You are not the same as uh, your siblings. So that is the reason why you don't look the same. So you can, you can uh, see that uh, at one point, there are some of the characteristics, maybe people will tell you that your complexion looks like that of your mother, but your character looks like that of your father. So that comes in because of cross matching. So it is at this point where you gain to have both uh, uh, characteristics from the mother as well as uh, from the father. Then now it, what will matter now is uh, which char uh, character will overlap the other. So you find that there are some people who uh, resemble much of their mother than their father, even in their uh, uh, characteristics or what they do, behavior and whatever. So what it means there is that uh, the genes which you inherited from your mother were, maybe I would say, were dominant as uh, compared to those from, from which you, you gained from your father. So that what it means here. You can't see the board?
So why you didn't tell me you guys? Hey. What was the last point that you got? Add the chiasm. You can see the board now. Can you see the board? Respond, guys, first so that uh, we move. Can you see this the board now? Hello? Guys, are you there? Hello? Can you get me? Yes. Okay, so I, I lost my network. This is so inconvenient. So the most complicated phase when it comes to meiosis is prophase one because it involves a lot of activities. The rest are very simple. Okay, so are you there? Can you see my screen? Okay. So what I was saying is that uh, after close mashing, these uh, two chromosomes will still remain attached at the at the chiasma point. Uh, uh, okay. All right. So this guys, this exchange, exchange of portions, is what we call recombination or recombinant so what we have here as you can see in uh, this phase what we have now is uh, these two homologous chromosomes they have separated from each other and you can see that this chromosome now has gained that portion from this chromosome this one also has gained that portion from that chromosome that is what uh, we are showing there so these uh, these uh, these two are what we call the recombinant genes or chromosomes so very soon when it comes to genetics we will still come back here so in genetics here you be uh, you be being asked to calculate what we call recombinant frequency so recombinant frequency is calculated by <laughs> we also have math in biology guys so recombinant frequency is calculated by total number of recombinant genes. Total number of recombinant genes over total number of, you can say total number of genes in that particular organ, uh, organism. Or these you can call them as a chromosomes. Total number of recombinant chromosome over total number of chromosome in general. So what we mean is that this chromosome this one here, the half of this chromosome is non-recombinant. Same is true with the, this one here. So if we want to calculate the uh, recombinant frequency from here, we were going to say that total number of uh, recombinant uh, chromosome, we only have two there. 
So we are going to say 2 over total number of you chromosomes. After they separate now, we are going to have 4. Then find the percentage of this. That is your recombinant frequency. But this doesn't apply here. This applies in uh, genetics, the application of meiosis in uh, genetics. So I've mentioned this in advance. Okay, so that is what will happen. There is, so the points to consider here, you have to know the cross matching, you have to know the synapses and uh, the chiasma and uh, these recombinant genes. That's what we have to get from prophase 1 of meiosis. Then the separation of um, the separation of these uh, closing uh, close matching chromosomes is what we call terminalization. Terminalization for us to reach at this point where now we see these uh, homologous chromosomes separated from each other. That is a process is what we call terminalization. So terminalization complies, that's what completes the prophase 1 of meiosis 1. What we have discussed from here, this is what guys complies the prophase 1 of prophase 1 of meiosis 1. Unless you have questions. Any questions? On prophase one, yes. Okay, so terminalization that is just the process by which the chiasma points detaches those two homologous chromosomes. We can say the process by which the homologous chromosomes separate from each other at the chiasma point. That is terminalization. So we are done. So at this point, guys, look at this cell as uh, still having those uh, recombinant. Uh, here, though, I will not show them as recombinant genes, but uh, this chromosome, each, each one of these chromosomes now is uh, comprising of uh, those recombinant, uh, uh, recombinant uh, genes. But still more, we still have those pairs, 23 of them. Then we also have these chromosomes from the mother, this side. Okay. Then now, when the cell completes uh, prophase 1, then it's going to go into metaphase. Metaphase 1. So in metaphase 1 now, we know what happens in metaphase 1. With regard to, with regard to mitosis, there's alignment of the chromosome at the equatorial plate. The same is true when it comes to metaphase uh, 1 of uh, meiosis 1. What will now happen is that uh, these genes, or these chromosomes, we know that uh, at this point, uh, close matching has already taken place, closing over has already taken place. So now what will happen is that these genes now are going to align themselves at the equatorial plate. Someone's mic is on. Ask if ask if you have a question or mute your mic. So now what we see guys is the alignment of these homologous chromosomes at the equatorial plate. So uh, what you have to know from here is that it is the homologous chromosomes which separates in meiosis 1 and not the sister chromatides. Okay. So at this point, maybe I was very fast to, to cut that uh, chiasma point. So these non-sister chromatides are still attached at the chiasma point. As they enter metaphase, those homologous chromosomes are still attached at the metaphase plate. But of course, guys, here you have the spindle fibers, just like we had in uh, mitosis. So we are going to have those spindle fibers on the opposite poles. These are, so these are centrioles. Then these centrioles are going to send their microtubules. So these microtubules are the ones now which will attach to the 
these homologous chromosomes like that. Hope guys you are following this. Then now what will happen is that this cell now, this is the equatorial plate of meiosis 1. That is in metaphase, metaphase, one, metaphase 1. Then this is a shift. It's com uh, meiosis, uh, metaphase 1 has uh, been completed. Then the cell now will enter the anaphase 1. So in the anaphase 1 now, these have to separate. The homologous chromosomes have to separate. So they are going to be that separation. So this uh, cell at this point now will look like... Uh, okay. Something like this. Things to take note here is that here, it's uh, in anaphase 1, it is the homologous chromosomes which separate and not the sister chromatids. That is one of those differences which exist between, uh, between uh, meiosis 1 and uh, meiosis 2. In meiosis 1, we get to see homologous chromosomes separating. But though I'm not showing, there's these chromosomes which I'm showing here, they have got those recombinant genes. So I'm not showing those recombinants because I'm using the, the same, same color, like this. So for the sake of good understanding, or better understanding, let me just use two of those chromosomes so that we see better where we are going, like that. So here we had uh, those centrioles, this side. These centrioles are the ones which have separated these, uh, the spindle fibers, are the ones which have now separated the, these homologous chromosomes. This is the anaphase of meiosis 1. This was metaphase, metaphase 1. So these now, a, a pair of chromosomes are going to move to the opposite poles, just like this. Then, what will follow next? What will follow next is the, the final phase of meiosis, which will be telophase 1 now. So we know what happens in telophase 1 now is that uh, these are just going to the cytoplasm of the cell is going to, to divide. Then uh, we said that uh, we said that this telophase is just the reverse of of prophase. So whatever happened in prophase, though here it is going to be very very different from prophase one, for the fact that uh, there is no closing over here, there is no synapsis. But uh, what will just happen to these chromosomes now? is that they are going to decondense so that they can become uh, thin and uh, long. Then again, the nuclear membrane. In some cells, the nuclear membrane is uh, retained here uh, at the telophase. So what do we have now? These are going to, the cytoplasm is going to divide, thereby giving us these two cells. Cytokinesis has taken place here. I've shown everything in, ad, in adivant. So what we have now is that these chromosomes have formed one cell. So we have those chromosomes in this cell. Of course, at this point now, those chromosomes have a recombinant. They have got those recombinant genes. The same is true with this one here. So these are the two cells which are produced at the end of meiosis 1. Meanwhile, the sister chromatide are still attached at the centromere. That is another point to, to take note there. The sister chromatides have not separated. They are still attached at the centromere. So what has just separated are the homologous chromosome. Each of those, those pairs now has moved, to the, has moved to the opposite side of the cell. Then the cell now, after telophase, has finally divided to produce these two, these two cells. Any questions up to this point? This is the end of meiosis 1. Any questions? Ask questions, guys. You can't tell me that everything is clear. No, it's not possible. Ask questions. There are a lot of interesting questions from meiosis. You are going to, to find them.
Yes. Exactly the same. So the, just the cytoplasm of this cell now is uh, dividing. The same applies again. When we are talking of um, animal cells, we say th th uh, this uh, pinched area is uh, it's going to be called what? When we talk of animal cell, yeah. Then when it uh, plant cell, it, it becomes to be called a cell plate. So that the same what happens here when it comes to cytokinesis. Then these now these uh, cells they are surrounded by the nuclear membrane which reappears in the in the telophase. But there are some cells which do not even uh, form the nuclear membrane here. There are other cells which are even going to form this nuclear membrane. Now guys, this is the end of uh, meiosis 1. Then having reached uh, at this point, the cell does not rest. It's going to continue now and enter meiosis 2. It's now going to enter meiosis 2. So now we are, we are going to start from here. We are now starting from here and enter meiosis 2. So what will happen now is that each one of these cells is going to enter meiosis 2. So this one is going to produce its own two cells, which will not be identical. This one is also going to produce its two cells, which will also not be identical. Then we are going to end up with four different cells, which are going to have haploid number of uh, chromosomes. This is what where we are heading now. We started from a single cell, which we call the zygote. Then now, there are these, whatever uh, has taken place in prophase 1 up to telophase. We have produced these two cells. These two cells are containing those recombinant chromosomes. These now are then going to enter meiosis 2. So if there are no questions in meiosis 1, then we, let's enter meiosis 2. So I said that meiosis 2 is... Uh